Today we're talking about growing garlic. I've grown garlic many different ways and sometimes I end up with these absolute monster heads of garlic, other times I end up with some disease. Now I've tried a lot of different ways of growing garlic throughout the years, a lot of different strategies, and honestly I found that overcomplicating it doesn't actually help you get better garlic. So in today's video we're going to go over what I'm actually going to be doing to grow my garlic this year, what I've changed, and how I ended up with these gigantic heads like this. Before you can plant your garlic, you have to separate out your cloves. Now, what I've done here is I've separated out all the larger cloves, like these guys over here, from all these smaller cloves that I have in this basket. I'll show you exactly what I do with these at the end, but the reason why I did this is because the bigger your clove of garlic, the bigger the head of garlic that you get at the end of the season. This is especially true if you keep saving the same garlic year after year, you could end up growing some true monsters where they consistently always end up this size. So that is an important reason why I did this. Now, if you don't have a lot of space, maybe you just bought one head of garlic, don't bother separating out the small ones, just plant them all out and you'll still get a great harvest. But if you end up ordering too much garlic like I always do, then separating out these little guys actually doesn't feel bad because you get a great secondary crop from them when you plant them in a specific way. So we'll get to that towards the end of the video, but when you are separating out your actual garlic, there is actually a couple things that you want to watch out for. Number one is to look at the actual wrappers as you're separating out the cloves. If you see any dark spots, yellow spots, anything like that, the chances are that that bulb, or actually, sorry, just that clove, might be diseased. If there's one clove that's diseased, it doesn't mean that your whole head is trashed, but oftentimes, that might be true. Now, the other thing people say when you're separating out your cloves of garlic is they wanna make sure that you save these papers, like the outer skin of the garlic. If you do end up accidentally removing it, it's actually not a big deal. I'm actually removing this one right now just to prove a point, but this is a semi-protective layer, but it's not strictly necessary for the garlic to grow. In fact, if you have a damaged clove of garlic in your head when you're separating them, I actually like to peel back a couple of the other ones to make sure that they are not diseased. So the other thing I like to do is to squish the garlic cloves, and if they feel soft or they give at all, I'll separate those out and throw them away. Now, Chances are that garlic clove might not have some sort of really bad disease that will spread to the rest of your garlic crop. That is the worst case scenario, which can happen. But the best case scenario is that you'll plant that garlic clove and it'll just rot in the ground, giving you nothing anyway. So it's always good to sort of cull out some of these garlics at the very beginning. The last thing you wanna watch out for is that when you're separating out the cloves, make sure that you don't actually damage the very base part of the garlic here. This is actually a living transplant. It's not like you're planting a seed, the seed grows roots and then turns into a plant. This is actually a plant. You're separating out parts of the garlic and you're planting it. So you wanna make sure that you have some of this old root system intact, because that is where the roots will be coming out from. So now that we've separated all the cloves, I wanted to talk about one of the things I'm doing differently this year, which is that I'm not soaking my garlic. Last year, I soaked all of my garlic before I planted it. I did two different types of soaks. One was an alcohol soak, which is to sterilize it from any potential disease but last year I had the most disease that I've ever had in my garlic. I don't think those two are connected, but it didn't really prevent it. The disease I had was allium rust or garlic rust, which are these little red patches that grow on the leaves of your garlic, stunts the growth, and actually might even entirely stop the development of a bulb at all. So it's very sad, you don't really want it. So I don't wanna actually save any of the garlic from last year to replant it. All of the garlic I'm planting this year is from new seed that I know is not from my garden, and thus, should hopefully be free of rust. A few months ago, I installed all these raised beds behind me and they're doing really, really wonderfully. But right over here where I'm sitting is an area where I didn't install any raised beds because I had to actually beat back the worst weed that I've ever dealt with, which is a Madeira vine. Right here is a bucket or a tub full of the tubers from this hell of a vine. And actually this is tub one of eight or 10. I've pulled out so many of these tubers I don't think I could get them all. I know that they're hiding underground here. I had to dig two feet deep just to pull out this amount right here. And I know that they're even deeper than that. So before we plant this, I do want to install some weed block here, fill this bed up with soil. I also wanted to talk about what you might be seeing here because we actually updated the design of our birdies beds. Here's a quick rundown of what we've changed for this next gen birdies line. The first and most exciting in my opinion is the fact that it is now entirely an imperial measurement. That means that it is foot by foot to the T. This right here is the medium short bed, which is configured currently in the three by six foot dimensions. The cool thing about that is anytime you have a wide panel, it's exactly two foot from the bolt to bolt. And anytime you have a short panel, like right here at the end, they're exactly one foot apart from bolt to bolt. This makes planning your garden much easier because now you could use graph paper, have everything by the foot. 
But also, there's a really cool thing you could do with these bolts now that they're separated by feet. I'll show you that when we get planting. The other thing I wanted to quickly mention is that we've updated the bracing system to have these really rigid channels. They're made of the same material as the bed. It stops the bed from having any sort of chance of bowing in because these are extremely rigid. In the middle here is the hook and loop system that is actually a wire brace that stops it from being able to ever push out from any sort of overloading or anything like Hugo culture builds. So I gotta say, these are much improved. It is very slight on the surface, but it just makes life easier to plan your garden by the foot. And also to have this updated little bracing system here, which I think is going to be much more robust over time. So now what I need to do is go get the weed fabric, start laying it out. I've never used it before. And I'm not looking forward to it. Usually I would never recommend it, but when you have a weed like this right here, you gotta do whatever you can to ever stop this from coming back because it will ruin your life. So I'm gonna get the weed fabric and we'll get going. I entirely forgot about daylight savings, which meant that it got dark at 5 p.m. yesterday and I didn't get to finish the video. So here we are, we're planting the garlic, but first I want to set up the spacing. Now in this next gen birdies line, since everything is an imperial measurement and it's exactly foot by foot, that means that this bolt to this bolt is exactly one foot apart which allows me to make a very clever system for spacing my plants. What I'm going to do here is take a piece of twine. I just tied a little overhand loop onto that. I'm going to take that and put it behind the nut. Okay. So now I'm going to come down to the other side of the bed, pull off a little bit more string than I need, and then do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you can't quite get it tight enough, another method you could do instead of tying a loop, is to just keep wrapping it around the bolt until it feels nice and tight. And you could snip off any of this extra string here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do that to this other bolt and we'll talk about spacing our garlic. Now what we have is exactly one foot from the edge of the bed to this line, another foot to the next line, and another foot to the end of the bed. So now spacing this out is going to be super simple. When it comes to growing garlic, six inches around from every single clove to the other, is actually pretty much the optimal spacing. A lot of people have tested this out. And while you can get bigger garlic, for example, this guy was spaced out something like 10 to 12 inches apart, and that's why it is so massive. Overall, you get less yield if you space them that way. So instead of having one giant head, you could have two growing next to each other that would together equal more garlic than that single head of garlic right here. So what we're going to do is stick to that six inch spacing in every single direction. And to start with, I'm going to draw some trenches across this bed. Now this is a three by six bed, which means that I could put five rows across this way if I do six inch spacing, because I can't go right up against the wall here. That's just not going to lead to good garlic growth. So I'm gonna start by drawing off a little channel here. I'm gonna stay probably four inches off from the edge of the bed. And I'm just gonna drag my hand just because I like the way that it makes a very neat furrow all the way to the end of the bed. Now that we have our furrows placed, I wanna talk about one more experiment. It's actually something I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, which is that there is a soft neck garlic and a hard neck garlic. I'm not gonna dwell on it, but soft neck garlic tends to do better in warm climates like San Diego. Hard neck garlic is very cold tolerant. It could actually be buried under snow and do fine, which is why it's more tolerant to northern colder climates. But there's a way where you could grow it here because it actually needs a cold period in order to form a bulb. So this garlic was actually in the fridge for three weeks. That is to trick it into thinking it experienced some sort of winter. And now it should be able to grow just fine. Even though we haven't hit our coldest point here in San Diego, it's only gonna get as cold as that refrigerator and not any colder. So I'm going to go ahead and start this right here, but I actually ordered two pounds of this exact same garlic. So the other garlic is still in the fridge. I'm gonna let it sit for six weeks and see if that makes any difference in the overall yield of the garlic. And maybe if three weeks is enough time, I'm not gonna bother taking up my entire fridge to hold a bunch of garlic for six weeks. Now, when it comes to planting the garlic, the only thing you really have to worry about is that you make sure that you put the root end down and the pointy side up. If you don't do it, the garlic's going to have to flip itself over. It's just not gonna grow very well. So all I'm gonna do is take that clove and press it right into the soil. Now, if you have harder soil, like say you don't have a brand new planted raised bed, then you wanna break up the soil a little bit just to help make your life easier. But here it's nice and fluffy, so I don't have to worry about it too much. And then I'm gonna take my fingers like this. This is going to be my rough six inch spacing guideline. I don't wanna be exact here. I found that last year when I did actually almost nothing to prep my garlic, it did just fine. So in this case, I'm also going to be following that sort of philosophy. So that was the Dunjanski garlic. Now I'm gonna go in with a soft early Italian garlic. 
So this is one that is soft neck. It won't produce escape. It doesn't need a cold period in the same way. Don't forget, we're going to deal with all these small cloves of garlic after I finish planting this bud out. And I'll show you actually one of my favorite things to harvest from it, which is green garlic. It's one of these beautiful things where if you plant it right, you get a second crop of garlic that is really delicious and will be ready before all your other garlic is ready. Now I'm going to be putting in the smaller varieties that I ordered. These are all new varieties for me from Botanical Interest, our seed company. And I wanted to just try a couple different ones here, which is why I'm growing these. So the first one is Creole Red. That is a new one to me. Sometimes you get a garlic like this that had hidden cloves. To me, it looked like one clove initially, but then I felt it and there's actually two more attached to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in the small garlic planting since they're so tiny, but the rest of this is gonna go right in the ground. Then I'm gonna go in with the Nootka Rose. That is another one that seemed really interesting to me. I like the size of the cloves on this one. It also produced a lot of good sized cloves. So that is a great combination of, for garlic. Actually, I'm running out of space. So a lot of this is actually gonna end up going in the ground somewhere else. And this is going to be my safe bed. So at least I get one bed of garlic where I know there is no disease that should be present to begin with. And the rest is going to hopefully just work out. It is a El Nino year this year, which means that we're going to be probably getting more rain than we usually do, which means that I'll probably also get more garlic rust than I usually do. So this year I do have a plan for that though. I'm going to make sure not to water. I'm going to make sure to elevate the beds even higher so that the water can drain if it does rain a lot. And those are kind of the main strategies here that I'm going to be using to make sure that none of my garlic actually drowns. So at this point, we're as planted out as we can get here. So now I'm going to talk about why I left this bed not filled up all the way. Last year when I did a similar method for planting garlic, I drew a bunch of furrows. Then I tried covering back up again, but I realized there's no point in covering it up when I could just bury it in compost and mulch, and that'll help fill up the rest of the side of the bed. Now I am actually gonna go like this, just cause I wanna make sure that at least the potting mix is on top of the garlic. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more guaranteed that I know what's in here. So once I finish doing this, I'm going to come back through and top it off with this Happy Frog soil conditioner. It's basically just a bunch of really broken down wood matter. It has a little bit of bat guano in there, so it has some NPK, which means it'll have some extra fertility for the garlic. And it's also going to do a really good job of retaining moisture on top of this bed, but we're still going to top it with straw. If you're wondering why I'm double mulching by putting this material and then the straw on top, remember that some of this garlic is hard neck, the one in this two rows over here, and it needs a cold period. This material is very dark, which means it'll absorb a lot of sunlight, which means it'll also get really hot. By putting this light colored straw on top, I'm hoping to reflect away some of this extra heat. And then once we get into the cold period here in San Diego, this will probably be broken down a bit and it'll start just helping modulate the temperature of this bed by keeping it more even. Sort of like a blanket, it's always going to keep the temperature more consistent and that's exactly what we're looking for here. And actually on that note, by the time we get to spring, I expect that a lot of the straw will be fully broken down. I'll be applying another layer at that point to make sure that again, I keep the soil nice and cool while also helping to retain some moisture. So now what we have to do is go deal with all those tiny cloves of garlic that I've been saving and I have a space in mind for them. I don't know where I'm gonna put the rest of this garlic that I have left over, but I do know where I'll put those tiny cloves. Here we are over in my container section where I have a couple things I wanted to point out really quickly. First of all, the oyster mushrooms have actually fruited again. These are the oyster mushrooms I started in my mushroom video that I put out recently. So if you're curious about that, check it out. Very quick results. It's only been maybe a month since I started that. But anyway, back to garlic. What we have here is a 15 gallon grow bag. I chose this one in particular because it is very wide instead of very tall. And this is going to give us the most surface area to plant out these baby garlics. Unlike the other garlic, there are no rules here when it comes to spacing. Actually, that is something interesting to think about is that spacing is kind of like a construct, if you will. It is whatever you want it to be. If you plant things close together, you will get smaller harvests, but they will still grow. If you plant them further apart, they tend to get bigger. This is true for things like cabbages, broccolis, garlic, and that's exactly what we're taking advantage of here, is we're going to literally put this garlic right next to each other. The goal here is not to grow a bulb of garlic, is to grow green garlic. And I actually have an example of what that looks like right over here in this pot, which is one of my music garlics that I did save and plant because it was such a big head of garlic that I felt bad not saving those genetics in any way whatsoever. 
So I actually planted this out a long time ago. It says on the tag that I planted it in May and it just came up. So <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to it, but it is growing and I should get plenty of chill hours in that fabric pot because it's not very well insulated. So all of this garlic, it doesn't matter what the variety is. We're just going to go ahead and put it right next to each other. And it's just gonna grow into these, which are the grains of the garlic, the leaves. And you could cut those and use them as you would chives. You could use them to impart a garlicky flavor into any dish. You just cut them up finely, saute them, throw them into a bowl of ramen. They'll add a nice, rich garlic oniony flavor. Really, really delicious. One of my favorite things to come out here and just add to whatever I'm cooking is that green garlic. So once I put all these in the ground, all I'm going to do is cover it up again with that uh, soil conditioner as like a sort of compost. Then I'm going to top it with mulch and water it in. And this, the cool thing about it is that you could harvest it whenever you want. If it starts growing, let's say within the next month, you could start clipping it then. You could let it grow for as long as you want. You could keep cutting it. It'll keep regrowing. It's really a wonderful thing. Until this little clove of garlic is spent, it'll keep producing greens. So that's what I have for you guys on garlic today. If you have any questions about this, if you want to see more, because I have a lot more garlic to plant out, we could talk about different strategies. Let me know in the comments. But until then, I'll see you guys next time when I finish planting these 200 cloves of garlic.